live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. The desperate search for a man missing off the East Coast has ended with a grim discovery. A large scale operation to find the diver was launched last night. His body found late this morning. This morning, hopes of finding a missing mate and brother alive were over after what had started out as an evening dive. They located him underwater in the area where the, the men had been diving uh, and he was brought to shore. The man, believed to be a Western Australian in his 30s, was snorkelling with five others off the gardens. The alarm raised after he was separated from the group, failing to return to shore. The group then returned to the water looking for their, their friend and were unable to locate him and call police. His disappearance sparking a desperate wide-scale search. The Westpac helicopter, a Melbourne-based Challenger rescue aircraft and community volunteers among those joining the operation. Massive community assistance with the search, for which we're extremely grateful. Authorities working through the night, holding on to hope. The conditions were really good. Uh, yesterday was the water was warm. He was in a wetsuit. We, we actually were holding out hopes that we would recover him uh, alive. But by mid-morning, worst fears were realised. The man was recovered this morning. Uh, I understand he didn't have his uh, dive belt on. But we did recover two uh, fins from the water while we were doing the search that uh, we believe were the missing man's. The man's brother among those who found him in waters near where he was last seen. Very, very distressed, obviously a very tragic circumstance um, and we're offering our, our support to them as best we can. Police say formal identification of the man's body will take place in due course. A report will now be prepared for the coroner. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. Cabinet ministers and Liberal MPs met with the Premier today as he mulls over sending Tasmanians to an early election. Speculation is rife, it could be called this week, to be held on March 23, but party members aren't giving anything away. Creating a more diverse hospitality workforce, a $250,000 grant will help Hamlet Cafe build a new commercial kitchen and train Tasmanians living with a disability. We're going to be able to expand our training capacity by 94% over the next three years, which is huge because we currently have about a 14 to 16 month wait list for our training program. The Liberal team for Clark making an early doorstop ahead of D-Day on an early election. What we need is the certainty and stability of majority government so that we can deliver on our promises and commitments to the people of Tasmania. If we go to an early election, it's purely and simply on Jeremy Rockliffe's head. He's been unable to negotiate across the parliament. He's been unable to manage his team. Cabinet met today on the agenda, deciding whether Tasmanians will head to the polls a year ahead of schedule. Are we headed to an election? Uh, look, we're just having our usual meetings. Ministers left the executive building hours later, staying quiet or happy to speak, just not about an election. Oh, look, it'll be a matter for the Premier to... Uh, um, update you guys on. Backbenchers arriving a short time later. Looking forward to our meeting. Kip, would you like there to be an election? Looking forward to our meeting. While the independents being blamed hit out themselves. Bass independent Lara Alexander likening her former party to an abusive partner, claiming the Liberals hope she'll give in and meekly sit in the corner like a submissive female waiting for permission to speak. I have offered to work with the Premier and continue supporting him. In recent days, the Liberals have looked to shoot down concerns about the party's ability to find candidates to run for them. Today, Madeleine Ogilvie said she was encouraging more women to be a part of their team. I'm a big fan of women and, you know, I am one. I am here to say to the women of Tasmania, we got you. And with tomorrow being Valentine's Day, it could be the perfect time for a date with the Governor, Josh Duggan. 7 Tasmania News. Jack Jumper's players have headed back to school to help mentor Tasmania's next generation. Players from the NBL club took part in two events, both sharing the same goal of encouraging children to make safe and healthy choices. Passing on the knowledge that helped them reach the top, Jack Jumper's players taking time away from the court to share their experiences with Tasmanian students. When you're incorporating sport, with education, with health, teamwork. I mean, I think that's how you create 
uh, environment for someone to, to thrive. Basketball is not the hero of the program. Educating kids through the Jack Jumpers brand is. Jack McVeigh, Jordan Crawford and others stopping by St Cuthbert's Primary School. It's one of 55 which signed up to the Jack Jumpers school program. Focusing on nutrition, well-being, resilience and diversity. Lessons from the Jack Jumpers high performance are weaved through the curriculum. How the players go about um, diet, how the players go about exercise, how they look to resilience and of course diversity. Players also put in the hot seat, grilled by students about various topics. Often be a couple net worth ones. What's your net worth? What car do you drive? Mostly it's show us your best dance move. Before getting a chance to shoot hoops with their heroes, the club hoping the lessons learned will be taken home by those involved. If you play basketball it's not just like about playing and stuff, you've also got to be like good about it and like kind. It taught us how to play a bit more and to like eat healthier. Across the river, Milton Doyle visited Montrose Bay High as part of a Beacon Foundation and Marinus Link program focused on getting students work ready. So much today with young people, you can't be what you can't see. So really, you know, this is a great opportunity. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. With a federal decision on Macquarie Harbour salmon farming looming, Tasmania's business leaders are sending a strong message in support of the industry. The TCCI says a closure would devastate local economies, but activists say the environmental impact outweighs financial concerns. For John De Bruin, Macquarie Harbour's salmon farms help keep the family business trucking along. But he's hearing rumbling from West Coast clients about the industry's uncertain future. If all those staff that are working for the aquaculture companies were to leave that community, it would absolutely decimate the community. The Bruin Transports joined the Tasmanian Chamber of Commerce in sending a submission to the Federal Environment Minister supporting the industry, saying its removal would have a flow-on impact to other sectors across the state, including retail, hospitality and transport. We transport fish feed, some of the inputs um, into the industry. We also bring fish out. Yeah, really what we need to remember with this industry is that it employs hundreds of people right across the state in a whole range of different ways. The TCCI is also calling for a quick result from Minister Plibersek to ensure business confidence. Environmental activists aren't convinced, saying a decision shouldn't be expedited. There is a scientific process underway. It shouldn't be hurried, it should be done as quickly as possible. Arguing the harbour's health and the plight of the endangered Morgian skate transcend economic profits. Shame on these companies for using workers as bargaining chips. Uh, this is not about workers and their, and their health. This is about uh, making profits and it's about politics. Mark Zita, 7 Tasmania News. A key health advocacy group has warned it's in danger of having to cut back its work unless it receives a funding lifeline. Health Consumers Tasmania says project funding it's been allocated ends in June and its base funding alone isn't enough for it to maintain 12 full-time equivalent staff. Uh, if that funding isn't continued then we'll be back to about 1.5 FTE across the organisation. A government spokesperson says the budget submission is being considered. CEO Bruce Levitt today joined by Tasman Peninsula representatives calling for greater services in the region. Welcome back. We go to some breaking news now. Moments ago, the Premier announced Tasmanians will be going to an early election. We go now live to our state political reporter, Josh Duggan. Josh, what has Jeremy Rockcliffe said? Kim, the Premier said he will be going to the Governor tomorrow and asking her to call a general election. It comes after a day of meetings with his Cabinet colleagues and Liberal MPs where he says this was unanimously agreed. It's obviously spurred on by the deteriorating relationship with the two former Liberal MPs turned backbench or turned independents. And he says that re-electing a majority Liberal government is the only way to ensure certainty and stability. If the Governor does accept his request, March 23 is the date that's being tipped by pundits, but we'll see what tomorrow brings. Kim? OK, thank you there, Josh Duggan, with breaking news from State Parliament. We are going to an election. 
Well, a world premiere performance questioning the essence of life is hoping to challenge Mona FOMA audiences. Anito will play at the Theatre Royal during the festival. Costume performers are transformed into hybrids with the act aimed at questioning our understanding of the world we live in. In us becoming uh, many different beings, uh, the audience might be able to relate that they are also part of an environment where all our action, actions have consequence. Mona Foma begins on Thursday in Hobart. A third straight playoff appearance might be locked away, but the Jack Jumpers say they still have improvements to make. Wrapping up the regular season at home on Saturday night against Perth, the Jackies are currently on a three game winning streak, but their vice captain says they're still focused on getting the little things right. He's also relishing the chance to go up against the Wildcats. Perth is one of those programs that's been winning for a long time. Brass Cotton does what he does. Right now, our focus is still getting better every single day. Saturday is their annual Teal game, raising funds for cancer research. The Tigers play their final Marsh One Day Cup match tomorrow, currently seeing fourth on the standings, ready to leave nothing in the tank against Western Australia. In particular has been outstanding. Uh, Charlie Wakeham, Jordan Silk, these leading run scorers in the competition have been super. Um, and yeah, we've been, we've been a bit of a chasing powerhouse this year. Tomorrow is somewhat of a warm-up for the Shield clash with WA from Friday, where the Tigers have three matches left to consolidate their spot atop the ladder. Still recovering from a season-ending neck injury, 19-year-old Tasmanian spinner Amy Smith will tour Sri Lanka next month, named in the Australian under-19 squad. It's a glimmer of hope after being denied playing in the Tigers' ground for a WNCL three-peat, expected to make a return in time for the six-match tour. Incredibly, she's one of eight players with WNCL or WBBL experience in the 15-woman squad. Good evening. Well, what a day today. A bit of everything. Hobart 29, Launceston 28 and lower 20s for Devonport and Burnie. But how is this? Flinders Island, our high today with 37.4 degrees. That was recorded at 3.49 this afternoon but is still short of the record on the island of 39.4 degrees set in February 2014. Warm days also at Friendly Beaches where it was 35, Campania 34, St Helens and Ooze 33, Grove Reach 30, King Island 24, Liawini 23 and Strawn 21. A couple of cloud systems operating today, one with the thunderstorms down from Victoria and the other little band of cloud moving in from the southwest. Best rainfall to 4pm was 12mm at Fingal. Now that long line of storm clouds emanates from southwestern New South Wales to our east coast. The tropical north has them as well with isolated storms over central Queensland too. Tomorrow a trough runs from central WA up and then through to Victoria. A high pressure ridge sits over southern states. West to south westerly winds at 20 to 30 knots reaching 35 knots over the east and south. A change towards the northwest in the afternoon and swells to 4 metres. A gale warning has been issued for waters between Wineglass Bay and South East Cape and a strong wind warning for remaining coastal waters. Tomorrow, 20 for Hobart and partly cloudy. 18 for Geeston, an early shower clearing, possible early shower for Bothwell, 17 the maximum. Launceston, 22 and mostly sunny. Devonport, 21 as it will be for Cressy, partly cloudy there. Burnie, a mostly sunny 19 degrees, 17 the top for Strawn with a shower or two. Winds easing from Curry, a cloudy day and 19 degrees. 22 for St Helens, Swansea 21, Orford 21, all fine. On Thursday, fine and partly cloudy. Sunny over the east coast, maybe a light shower in the west. Fine and mostly sunny on Friday with west to northwest winds. And on Saturday, a fine day and getting a little warmer. The start of a pretty good weekend, in fact. 37 in Perth tomorrow as the heat continues there. Partly cloudy weather in Adelaide and Melbourne. Possible storms forecast for Canberra and Sydney. Partly cloudy in Brisbane, but heavy falls over Darwin. A little bit of cloud over Hobart, it's 20 degrees right now. There's been a few thunderstorms, rain and hail over Launceston, 21 currently. A bit of thunderstorm activity in the northwest too, Devonport currently 21 degrees. Just when I thought that the weather was going to be the big news story of the day, Kim, we've got an election on the way. So um, uh, if you become a candidate, uh, do you still read the news? What happens there? <laughs>
<laughs> Leave that alone. Thank you, Merv. There is no announcement I am making tonight. And that wraps up, or any night, <laughs> and that wraps up your news for now. Just recapping, Tasmanians are off to the polls. The Premier a short time ago announcing he'll be seeing the Governor to dissolve Parliament. No election date has been set as yet. Now the move follows an inability of the Premier to resolve differences with two former Liberals turned independents. You can join us tomorrow night for further developments as we begin coverage on the campaign trail. That is all your news for now. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday. For now, on behalf of the team, it is good night.